Today we are discussing about the main 5 reasons why iPhone 15 Pro will beat the iPhone 14. There are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that the A16 chipset was basically just a souped up A15. Apple reportedly had something far more ambitious in the works, opens a new tab, but couldn't make it work without excessive heat and battery drain, so reigned in its ambition at the last minute. Instead, it opted for something that's only a modest improvement on the previous generation. That means we could be getting nearly two generations worth of improvements in 2023, especially as the A17 Bionic is set to be Apple's first 3 nanometers chipset. While you should take any purported benchmarks this early with a colossal pinch of salt, one such leak suggests the iPhone 15 Pro could have benchmark numbers not too far removed from Apple's M1 MacBooks. And that's not even mentioning the efficiency gains that come from going from 5 nanometers to 3 nanometers. As a longtime user of Android phones, the fact that I have possibly the last iPhone to have a lightning port stings a little. A house full of USB C cables, and now I'm always on the lookout for a lightning lead. That won't be a problem for those making the transition from Android this year. Thanks to the European Union, it seems that every iPhone 15 is going to ship with a USB-C port for the first time. This not only means that your iPhone will be able to share leads with everything from your Nintendo Switch to your MetaQuest 2, but it should improve performance no end, too. Not only could we see the current 27W charging speeds finally improved upon, but data transfer speeds are also set to soar. The rumor is 20 Gbps for the Pro and 40 Gbps for the Ultra. Against that, we do have some fears about what USB-C could mean for the cost of iPhone chargers. iPhones are no slouch in the photography department, but in terms of long-distance shots they are at a natural disadvantage compared to the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and Xiaomi 12's Ultra due to the periscope lenses sported by those rivals. Current flagship iPhones max out at 3x optical zoom, but a periscope camera, as rumored for the iPhone 15 Ultra, could change things dramatically, as our US editor-in-chief points out in his recent opinion piece on why the iPhone needs at least 10x optical zoom. In short, a periscope lens uses mirror trickery to create more room for zoom lenses, making long-distance photography sharper and better looking. The upshot is that an iPhone embracing the tech could easily secure top spot on our list of the best camera phones with this likely upgrade. Another upgrade that could be exclusive to the iPhone 15 Ultra is a titanium shell. Apple has used titanium before on some of the best Apple watches, and it's preferable to the stainless steel currently in use on iPhones thanks to its lightness and strength. It doesn't hurt that it'll give the phone a premium, eye-catching look, either. There's also talk that the iPhone 15 range will get a new, slightly cubby look. Granted, aesthetically this is a matter of personal preference, but it could also make the new handsets a bit more comfortable in the hand, with fewer sharp edges to jab in. The rumor that Touch ID might return not in the form of a physical button, but with underscreen fingerprint technology has been kicking around for years. At this point, it admittedly seems unlikely, opens a new tab, and even if it felt like a shoe-in, I'd only believe it when I saw it. And yet, the return of Touch ID would absolutely be worth celebrating. And the dream for 2023 is just about still alive. Don't get me wrong, Face ID works brilliantly for a freelancer like me who has to check his banking app several times a week. But as the weather warms up, I've discovered that sunglasses present a problem to this trusty authentication and it would be nice to use my thumbprint as a backup. It's likely that not all of these rumors will become reality, especially the last one. That's leaks for you. But the point is, with just 5 months to go until the iPhone 15 range almost certainly emerges, it doesn't hurt to play the waiting game and find out for yourself before upgrading. Worst case scenario? It's a minimal upgrade and you can save a few quid by buying a newly reduced iPhone 14 Pro in September instead. But my bet is it'll absolutely be worth the wait. So guys these are the main reasons for iPhone 14 to beat against iPhone 14. And we there are many other reasons for it, and we will check it after releasing the iPhone 15. So guys if you like this kind of information, kindly like share and subscribe our channel for more videos.